Welcome to Playing With Fire, the podcast for people who are ready to custom build their love. We're talking about non-monogamy, however you design it, as an individuation opportunity. Want to leave the default and make your life spectacularly you? You're in the right place. Let's answer some questions. I happen to know that questions are your love language. <laughs> questions are. If I were to have a love language, then it would definitely be questions. Um, yeah. I know we've been collecting up questions from listeners, and it's fun for me to answer these um, and listen to what, what comes up for you when we get these questions, because I answer questions about relationships all day, um, and you get to do it in this cool context where yes. we record you. Um where do you want to start? Well, um, I have, uh, I have a, a couple of questions that have come up a few times that I feel pretty strong about answering. So I'd like to get into one of those um, because, well, it's been part of my life. Ah. And, um, so I bet I, I know what it is then. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do know what it is. Uh, it is, I'm in a relationship. And it really, monogamy, non-monogamy, I don't really care. I'm in a relationship with someone. Might not even be a romantic relationship, but I'm going to stick to that context. How do I build up lost trust? Mm. Well, I have made start some off strong. <laughs> doozy mistakes. Some I have, I've done harm. I have uh, inflicted abuse of different kinds. So um, me too. I I don't. We do. You know, we bump up against each other. We bump up against each other, and I've had more relationships than just this one. I right. have had friendships that have broken down. I have a first marriage that broke down, um, and I have absolutely caused harm to you as well. And you know, when I think about building up lost trust, the word trust holds mm -hmm. so much for me. So when I'm working with it personally. One of the things I have to remind myself about is um, what is it that, like, how big is this? Like, do I need to rebuild trust because I now have no capacity to trust this other person? Like, I mm. find them actually to be dangerous. Like, they feel like a, a huge threat to my existence. Or, because um, I've, I've had those experiences where I'm like, oh, I can't really even, I don't even feel like I can trust us to be in the same room together. On the other hand, there are times when, when we have a wobble or a, a breach yep. of a violation of an agreement that comes up. And what it is, is I don't trust you to behave the way that you say you will, or I don't trust you in this particular context, or you keep struggling with this particular agreement we've made. So now I'm struggling to trust you to hold your own agreements. So now I'm, I'm in a situation where... I would like to be the person that I told you I would be. Yeah. I have um I have not done that. I have I've fallen short and I want to build up the trust cuz originally I painted a picture, here's me and you took it in and said, "Great. Then let's do these things." And then I stumble. Now what? Now I want to rebuild that part of my connection with you or possibly build for the first time. Well, but it's against I think a, lot a of little us, bit of, um, it's, it's against a bit of an obstacle that I have put in my own way. Yeah. A lot of us want to be imagined as trustworthy without having ever built trust. So that's worth mentioning. You know, oh, yeah. we imagine, we humans, we tend to imagine ourselves as trustworthy, but another person doesn't owe us their trust. Right. Um, there are many things that go into establishing a basis for trust. So you introduced to me um, a long, long time ago, actually before we were romantically involved, you introduced the idea of um, questioning, what is it that I trust out of this context with this relationship? What is it that I trust you to do? Because we can trust someone to actually behave negatively. Um, we right. can trust someone to let us down. Um, but most of the time when we're talking about building trust, what we're doing is we want to build trust that who you say you are and who you, how you say you'll act is how you'll actually show up. 
And I, I, th- I just think it's so important to get clear on the difference between being seen as a trustworthy person and yep. therefore I can trust you with everything. I can trust you mm-hmm. with my life. I can trust you with my money. I can trust you with my children. I can trust you with my health versus can I trust you in the context we have created together? Yeah. Um, those are two different like great, there's a huge gradient, I would say, of, of yeah, what trust is then. a wide, wide spectrum. So if you've lost sure. trust... Um, that makes, that calls into question for me, like in what context is this a, yep. is this a violation of trust that means like, wow, we're really starting from ground zero. We got, we have so much to rebuild in which case I would aim toward repair before we even worry about rebuilding trust. I would work on okay. repair. Yeah, I would totally. prioritize that. Um, and repair is often an iterative process. Um, it happens over time. And it often takes much longer for the person who broke the trust to then like much longer for them to, to get to where they want to be. Yeah. It, um, it's, like they, they it may take longer than they imagine it should. Sure. Right. Cause they're like, okay, I'm trustworthy now speaking for myself. Hey, I'm trustworthy now. You can trust me. Yeah. But, uh, in fact, in my experience, both myself and observing other people, trust is about, um, pattern recognition. Mm. It's about understanding the pattern of someone's behavior and expecting it to continue in certain directions. Like you said, trust to do what? That Those directions could be anything. And it doesn't really matter from a point of view of, well, what have I seen? What do I know of this person um, that leads me to expect them to do what I'm trusting them to do? This brings up a really important couple of points. First is um, for those of us with a lot of trauma history or brought up in chaotic environments, we may struggle to trust because we we have our, our hypervigilance, our pattern recognition may be a little haywire or super hypersensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, that might not actually suit the situation we currently find ourselves in anymore. Um, ideally, it wouldn't like ideally we'd actually find ourselves in a safer situation. But also um, it brings up the apophenia. Humans Mm -hmm. spot patterns where there aren't patterns. I definitely fall prey to that. Um, I am very quick to jump into imagining a pattern, especially if I perceive a pattern that puts me at relational risk with, in particular, with romantic partners or romantic friendships or best friendships, like deep best friendships, like that level of intimacy where I've started sharing my really profound truths, my like my deep wounds, I will see a pattern really fast, like even just one time. And obviously one time can't be a pattern. <laughs> can't be a pattern. So this is, I have to own that and say, uh, <laughs> this is great. So from, from your point of view, and, and I'm, I'm having this discussion from the point of view of I've, I've lost your trust. It's just simple. I, I know how to talk about this. And you're describing your experience as someone who might be um, considering rebuilding trust. Yeah. You need to think about yourself and how trust works for you. And that leads so perfectly into what was going to be my first part of the answer of how do I build up trust? Step one, very, very much one, is you find out what trust means to this person. You find out their stories. What inspires trust in them? What are the elements that they need Mm. to trust? You have to know their stories, particularly in contrast to, I will do the things for you that I would want for myself to build trust. That's unlikely to work. It might, you might happen across something, but no. So in other words, the golden rule, not really the rule to use here. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. No, nope. that's not actually, that's not really going to get you where you want to go. But the platinum rule, yeah, that one will get you somewhere. The platinum rule um, is do unto others as they would have done unto themselves, which means yeah. you need to enter into a process of inquiry and let yourself be in the, in the process of finding out, yeah, what, what does trust look like, feel like, sound like for them? Like what are the What are the elements that create that sense of you are trustworthy to me? And 
that's where I'm going to return though to, so my hypervigilant self, my, my self with a lot of um, complex trauma would say, I also, I have some, some room there to get clear on what is it that I need to build trust with you in this context while also taking care of myself and not yes. overextending, mm -hmm. not saying, oh, I, I got to rush my process. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where I say like, yeah, we need to give this time. That was going to be, be uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> really it, uncomfortable. it can be, but um, this is a recipe, and one one ingredient is inquiry. I love that. That's a great word. I I need to find out from you what what will move us in that direction. Sec, and that's the very first ingredient. Next ingredient, time, because yeah. you can't reestablish patterns of behavior without time. Right. Cause we're looking for patterns of behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and one, one instance of betrayal can then yep. rupture, create a mm -hmm. rupture that now it takes many instances of yep. reaffirming, of being an in integrity of accountability in order to establish a basis. And this is just an uncomfortable truth. Um, and, and here's the thing, we don't have to do this, but a relationship right. may come to an end. Mm -hmm. If we're unwilling to, and when I said um, rebuilding trust is an iterative process, you know, we've had situations that there was layers of hurt that I needed to allow to sort of rise to the surface over time, and later, after we thought it was done, yeah. I had done enough of my own healing to realize, like, oh, actually, there was another, there was another big pain point in there. I didn't even know that was there. Can we go back and work on this because I'm struggling to trust you in this new context? Yeah. Um, and, and that's my stuff. So I want to say this isn't, that doesn't mean it's your fault, right? Like yeah, it can right. be about how do we build trust given my particular wounds, your particular wounds, our particular psychology, how we work together. That doesn't have to be about blame. You yep. don't have to be the nope. person at fault um, in order for us to be, because we've worked on this quite a lot when, when I recognize like, oh, it's not you I don't trust. This is my father. I don't trust. Right. This is my first mm -hmm. husband. I don't trust. This is my father-in-law. I don't trust. This is, oh, wow. This is actually quite a lot of men who've existed in my life. And I accidentally over and over again can glop them into an amalgam and then project that onto you. Right. So this is about There's... my fear mm -hmm. that you will act in this way that I have seen men treat me. Yeah. And now you don't have to do this work with me, but you have volunteered and it's been incredibly healing to me for you to, to stand in that space and say, I'm not going to take the blame for this because it, it wasn't me who took the actions, but I will enter into the trust building with you. Right. I will do that. Yep. I will get into that boat and row. <laughs> yeah, right. There it's have not been easy. It's been, been so helpful. times when actions that I think are innocuous, um, they 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 trigger match, me. They match patterns in your life that I'm not aware of. Yeah. So now you respond to that action in a way that seems, from my point of view, to be um, out of proportion or like I don't understand why this is such a big problem. I don't need to understand. Like in the moment, to 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 work with you to make it better. I don't need to understand it. To to commit to it. It will help me. The more I understand it, the more I will understand what to do. But I don't need to understand why you're there to commit to helping you and us move through it. Right. And again, I think this is about that that idea of we're volunteering for our relationships. We're yeah. volunteering. We're yeah. showing up and volunteering to be in this relational situation. And I, I'm choosing this. And I have equally found myself in a position to to get in and do some healing work with you, do some relationship development work with you and feeling um, the phrase that often comes up in our household around this is, Hey, I think you're treating me like I'm someone else. Right. I, here's what I, I, I think yep. what I'm feeling right now is you treating me in a way that lines up with the patterns you had with this other person or mm -hmm. with other people um, because I know your stories and it's, this is a very tender moment yeah. to share because I'm making, I I'm taking a guess. I'm taking a guess. I'm, I'm saying I, I think this. And so there has to be this sense of gentleness around here's what it 
feels like. But I also have to be open to you pushing back and saying, no, honey, that is not it. You are actually pissing me off right now. This is actually <laughs> no, you. No, this is you. <laughs> um, and yeah, maybe it reminds me of previous things. And that's not all that's going on here. Yeah. And that's been incredibly helpful for me to just have that language and to have, we have built that language into our relating over time um, so that now it's a time where both of us see that as sort of a soft pause. That's almost a soft safe word yeah. in our relationship yeah. where, hey, I think, I, I think you might be treating me like I'm someone else right now. Can we do a check-in about what's actually going on for each of us and what you're perceiving and what I'm perceiving and, and see if we can make some more shared meaning out of this. Which brings us right back to inquiry. Hey, are you, what, what are you doing right now? And, uh, then there's, and so I can respond to that either as, or, or you can, I mean, we, we've, we've both done it. We both said, I think you might be treating me as someone else. And one of the responses, um, is to say, no, I'm not. And being wrong, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, after right. some reflection, mean, I'm like, oh, you no. You mean you might get defensive? No, I deny. might get defensive, right? And uh, and that happens. Yeah. And it's about being resilient enough to to let those moments pass and get back to actual uh, collaboration. Yeah. So um, we're really what we're talking about here is pro re recollecting our projections mm, like we, we right. can be projecting our our junk our unconscious material onto our partners that happens the work of recollecting that is to look honestly at what is a pattern that's happening right now and how much of that is my stuff yeah because it probably isn't a hundred percent in either direction yeah so it's it's about entering into the collaboration of rebuilding trust and this doesn't go as like we could take this much more deeply. Well, and that's there's was, another was, episode yeah. um, that we've recorded recently on betrayal trauma. And I think that that would be a good one to link to this. But I actually think, you know, Ken, why don't we wrap this that's and let's pick up another Q&A um, yeah. in another short episode. Thanks for ha bringing this up and thanks for owning your stuff. You're really good at it. <laughs> thanks. We talk to you all the time. It is absolutely imperative to me that we get to hear from you as well. Yes, please. So we'd love to invite you to join us. Join Ken and I. Um, we're holding monthly Ask Me Anythings. Um, you can show up, bring your questions from podcast episodes, from your relationships, bring questions about non-monogamy, about individuation, about relationship skills. We would love to share space with you. We're hosting these AMAs free of charge for our podcast listeners. You are the Playing With Fire community and it matters a ton to us that we connect with you directly. So, Oh, I would so love to hear your questions and oh, it'd be so awesome. Yeah. Go to joliehamilton.com forward slash AMA and you'll find a way to sign up real quicky quick and get an invitation to join us in a small group where we're going to get together and talk about all things non-monogamy, individuation, and relationships.